remain in jail on long-term sentences relating solely to their right to freedom of expression. Now, I, I, I got that information uh, this week, and I'm interested, therefore, to know which is true, what Human Rights Watch is telling me, or what the, your representatives to us says. My understanding of this, and, and clearly if it's a matter of dispute, then we'll need to check it. My understanding was that charges relating to freedom of expression were indeed dropped, but there were other serious charges related to a number of the defendants. And my understanding is that they have been held on those charges. We don't have, because we've not got access to all the evidence, we're not in a position to make a judgment as to whether we think that's fair or not. But my understanding is certainly being that, that their convictions are related not to freedom of expression, but to other serious offences. So then in that sense, the memorandum we received that was uh, insufficient didn't go into all of the aspects. Um, and perhaps you could send us a note to update it. Well, I can, I can certainly update it. I mean, it, it, it's honest and accurate in relation to freedom of expression, but plainly, if people are charged of of other offences. Okay, all right, fair enough. But, but, uh, but we'll, we'll check that. If is that your understanding? I, yeah, everyone's interested in the Oh, well, I love this guy. He's very fair. <laughs> He's going to check. Uh, I'm Khadija Al Musawi. Of course, I'm the wife of the most handsome one in the 13. That's a fact, Farida. <laughs> and uh, I've just received a message that she has been charged with a new charge just today while we are sitting here because the police were mistreating one of the political prisoners, Rabab, and uh, Zainab, as usual, interfered to defend her. And uh, she was charged with another charge of insulting police officer. Uh, in Bahrain, your identity is your crime. It doesn't matter uh, who you are. As long as you have the identity of being Shia after February 14, then you're a criminal. Now, um, I'm not going to go through uh, what Hadi has been through, Mr. Muhammad here. Uh, said enough, and I've promised myself not to get emotional and not to cry, even though it's very difficult, but I'll try. Um, when Mr. Bird says that they have other uh, uh, offenses, now I would love to know what are those offenses are, because neither the lawyer nor uh, any other uh, person in Bahrain knows that these are other than political uh, prisoners, and they are all, of course, in my husband's case, he's a human rights activist. Um, since February 14, uh, my, hus my husband was, of course, uh, active in uh, Lulu, and of course, I'm Maryam's mother. She's looking at me. I have to introduce her. She's my third daughter. I have four girls. Um, after February 14 and 8th of uh, April, when they uh, came to my home. Of course, we were in Zainab's house. It was a Friday, and Friday is our family gathering. And uh, they went to our apartment in where we live, and they couldn't find us. But my nephew lives there, so he phoned us and said they are coming to pick Hadi up. Uh, I was sleeping. Uh, Hadi came and wake me up. He said, would you like to have dinner? Of course, he knows I don't have dinner. So I immediately said, are they coming for you? He said, yes, you'd better get dressed. So uh, I got dressed. He said, when they come, I don't want anyone to interfere. He asked his son-in-laws to leave. Uh, they didn't uh, agree because they have just heard that uh, their uh, uncle's wife, uh, Fatima, after they took the husband, they sexually, uh, they touched her or something. It was Bedel Ghaith again. So they refused to leave. Hadi insisted that they leave, and they insisted that they don't want to leave, and that they want to stay because their wives are there. Um, Hadi said, OK, when they come, I'll just go myself. I don't want anyone interfering. I don't want anyone to come out. Just stay in the room. I'll just go with them. I was in the kitchen. I saw around. Um, 12 Jeeps with four black uh, Range Rovers coming with very dark ribbon. Uh, the minute I saw them, I came in. I said, they are here. 
Of course, I asked Hadi. I said, isn't it better for you to go? He said, no, if I go, they will give you people very hard time. He didn't know they will give us hard time, even though they'll take him. Anyway, um, I saw them. I just went in the room, and suddenly the main door was broken of the building. They didn't know in which flat we are, so they broke every single flat door from the first floor to the fourth floor that we were in. They came in very, very um, aggressively. They were very large. Some of them didn't speak Arabic. They spoke very, very well American accent English. They didn't understand Arabic at all. Um, Hadi went out and he said, uh, I'm Abdel Hadi. He said, we have the target. And then they jumped on him and started beating him up. Zainab interfered, don't hit my dad. So he came to push her. I went in the middle. They were, of course, very large, all with masks. None of them you could see the face. And uh, I went between Zainab and the guy who afterwards, they brought him to uh, the court to testify that Hadi was violent. So I knew who he was. He was uh, called Faisal and works with them uh, as an uh, officer or something. Um, he pushed Zainab, he pushed me. They were dragging Hadi down the stairs, kicking him, uh, hitting him. One of them was uh, hitting his head hard on the staircase. There were blood. OK. Now, Zainab couldn't, un couldn't take it. She went to, the, to rescue her father. He came, the one who couldn't speak Arabic. And he said to her, go back. She said, you don't frighten me. And you're not man enough to take off your mask. I'm going to see my dad. He said, he started saying very, very bad words. And then Badr Ghaith, who later I knew that he was Badr Ghaith because, of course, he came to the court again. He said, bring her down with her CPR. Uh, I told him, you're not going to take her. He said, no, that's an order I'm taking. And they were all having uh, rifles. It wasn't only guns, but big rifles. Um, he pushed me to the stairs. I almost fell down, but I, um, I was just strong enough to not fall down. And he started dragging Zainab, and Zainab wanted to go herself. So I said to her, you're not going. I pushed her back. I stood in the middle, and I started talking to him human to human, like I'm doing now. No iPad, no laptop, no papers going around. I'm a human, you're a human. I'm a mother, I'm a grandmother. And I'm a wife who's very much in love with her husband. And we have been a very happy couple since 1981. I have four wonderful girls, and I want to live. Um, I told him, you are a Bahraini. He doesn't speak Arabic, but you are a Bahraini. I know you are uh, someone who has been born here, raised here. I am like a mother to you. He said, Haji. I said, no, I'm not Haji. I'm like a mother to you. And these are your sisters. You're not taking my daughter. If you're taking her, you'll take me with her. He said, OK. He pushed us all in the room. And suddenly, I saw my son-in-laws, all three of them, handcuffed like this, and the head down, taking them down. I said, where are you taking them? He just pushed us in the room, locked the room, took the key, locked the room. And he said, don't leave the room. We don't know what happened. After uh, around uh, 45 minutes, he came back. And he said to me, could you please cover your face? He was very human, because I have to videotape you all. I said, there is no need. You can just videotape. He videotaped us. He gave me the key. He said, do not come downstairs unless five minutes are over. Uh, Zainab wanted to go out. He came back. He said, no. And the other policeman who spoke American accent, uh, English. He came to go and hit Zainab again, and <laughs> unfortunately, his rifle went into the door uh, knob, and he went back and hit his head to the door. And this made him very angry. So he came back to hit Zainab. And again, I had to go between them, and I said, you hit your side. He said, no, she pushed the door. I said, no, it was your rifle. So he left. After five minutes, when we went downstairs, of course, there was blood all over the staircase. And uh, in Zain, because we were in Fatima's apartment, my second girl, and uh, 
the apartment downstairs was, was and then uh, suddenly we heard a voice in the apartment we went to the room there was a locked door it was jude's room that's my jude uh, we opened the door we saw muhammad was there he had a lot of bruises he was beaten badly muhammad al masqati i think some people here know him he's a human rights activist he's hadi's nephew at the same time he's my daughter's husband fatima uh, he had his hair shaved here part of the hair this when we know that when i knew that they just for fun brought the shaver and started shaving their heads um, i was very surprised okay where's wafi and hussein he said they took wafi and hussein but they left me uh, the orders were like this he told them i have because they didn't know who hadi and hussein and uh, who Wafi and uh, Hussein and Muhammad were. They just took them because they were men. And when they spoke and they saw their CPRs, they found out, okay, this is Wafi, Zainab's husband, bring him. This is Hussein, who is a very innocent young uh, man who got in love with my youngest and they got married and he was only 21 years old. Uh, okay, bring him. Muhammad al Masqati, human rights activist. Okay, leave him. They took three of them, and Muhammad says they were, they kept beating Hadi when he was unconscious. And uh, this is what happened that night. Of course, uh, what happened to Hadi, um, what uh, I heard from Muhammad al Jishi, that they called him to, um, to meet Hadi. He went to the room, he saw a man who was very mis. Uh, uh, his face was very uh, swollen. He didn't know who he was. He sat, and uh, Hadi just uh, asked him for a pen and paper. He took the pen and paper. He wrote to him, I am Abdel Hadi, because Muhammad al Jishi couldn't recognize who Hadi was from his face. That's how badly they have damaged his face. Anyway, um, what is uh, this is about Hadi. Now, I have another case, which is Zainab, and uh, in Zainab's case, Zainab doesn't like me talking about her. She says, this is something we have to do. We are going to do it to the end, and it doesn't matter what happens to me. It doesn't matter how Jude is suffering, but at the end, Jude will have a very nice future if we continue. And this is her main goal, to have a better Bahrain for our children, like Hadi wanted a better Bahrain for my children, because we were living in Denmark happily. Things were very good. Uh, Hadi had his own business. But when things happened in Bahrain, so we had a conference with the girls. And they said, OK, let's go back. We want to see family. And this was the main reason for me to go back to Bahrain, to be close with family. I didn't know that I'll lose my first family for my second family. Anyway, um, how long do I have? It's okay. Uh, in Zainab's case, Zainab thinks that whoever needs help, she has to help. It doesn't matter what the consequences are. She has been in and out of jail for so many times. And I remember one night she called me and she was crying. Zainab never cries. She's always very strong. And I said, why are you crying? She said, I want one thing from you. Can you do it for me? I said, yes. What do you want me to do? I want you to tweet Yasqat Hamad. And I was, <laughs> Mama, you want me to tweet what? I want you to tweet Yasqat Hamad. I said, but why are you crying? She said, it doesn't matter, just to tweet that. Um, I said, well, if I tweet that, uh, who will be with Jude? I have to be prepared for the consequences. And then she said that uh, she was going to be taken to the prosecution's office. And uh, she saw an Ethiopian mate sitting on the chair with very swollen legs and she asked her what are you doing here she said uh, they have uh, taken me accused her of stealing something from the person who brought her to be a maid in her house and uh, i've been he sitting here for three days i haven't eaten they don't even let me go to the toilet so zainab told her get up i'll take you to the toilet when she got up, the policewoman told her, sit down, and she asked Zainab to sit down. Zainab said, she's not going to sit down. She needs to go to the toilet, and you'd better go and bring her food. 
the police woman got very uh, offensive and she went and brought the lieutenant. The lieutenant came and he told her that if you didn't do, don't sit down, you'll be beaten up. She said, I don't care. As long as you let her go to the toilet, give her food, do whatever what you want with me. Of course, they uh, gave her something to eat and Zainab took her to the toilet and then he asked Zainab to come out. The minute Zainab went out, there were six police women standing with the lieutenant in front of them and he just uh, nodded to them and they started beating her, beating her up. And that day she was beaten up very badly. Of course, she told me that after I saw her in a visit. Anyway, uh, this is very simple stories. I say it's simple because in my case, in what we have seen, in what we see in an everyday basis in Bahrain, this is very simple. But maybe for you, who are all human rights activists, it's, it's not simple. Now, the things that happened to my family, I was working in an international IB school as head of guidance. I was in charge for all the school's uh, counselors. And uh, because they liked my job, at the same time, I became the administration manager for the same uh, school. My salary was very high. But on 3rd of May, when I went to school, I was in a meeting with all my senior staff. They called me down and uh, the vice president of the school said to me that you, are, you have been sacked and you need to leave the school. I said, okay, give me one week to give the work to everyone and then I'll leave. She said, no, you have to leave now. I said, what do you mean I have to leave now? I have so many things I have to do. She said, no, that's the order. Anyway, I said, what about my rights? She, has, she said, you have no rights. Okay, what's the reason for sacking me? She said, I don't know, you can read it in the letter. I opened the letter, it said, because of what's happening in the country, the school uh, doesn't need your services anymore. Uh, this was me, my daughter Batul, she graduated with uh, GPA 97.5. <coughs> And uh, she was hoping to, to get a scholarship to study medicine, but she was given nurse uh, to study as a nurse. Okay, she agreed to it. She studied and she was, uh, uh, she finished with honors and her GPA was four on four, full GPA. Until today, she can't work. She tried very hard and the only crime she has, she's not activist, she doesn't go to demonstrations, nothing. Uh, because she's Abdel Hadi's daughter and until today she cannot work. Um, of course, uh, Wafi and Hussein, they were in jail. Hussein was in jail for uh, almost uh, 10 months and uh, then he was released but charged uh, for gathering six months. Wafi was in jail around one year but then he was released and innocent but uh, nothing happened. And every time he goes to see Zainab and they don't let us, he keeps telling them, I served one year, can you take that for Zainab and let her come out? And they, of course, say no. <coughs> and of course, I have Maryam who lives outside. So for the time being, I live in uh, our dream flat, which I always dreamt that when the girls are all out, we need a small flat with very two, uh, small rooms where me and Hadi can stay in there. I'm staying there now alone. We gather still Fridays because it's very important for Hadi and for me that we keep gathering even if it's only two of us. Um, now, one of the things uh, that uh, I would like to end up with here is 2013 is the year that I have seen so, so many human rights organizations, so, so many human rights activists, but yet so, so many human rights violations. Why? I cannot understand, I cannot accept that with all those human rights activists, with all those human rights organizations in the 70s, in the 80s, you didn't hear about so many human rights organizations. But when a human rights organization said something, the government responded. Hadi was uh, 
accused of uh, when he said that uh, the prime minister has to step down, uh, he was convicted with one year and a half. And one report made the king let him go. Now, he is a very known human rights activist who worked with an international human rights organization, Frontline, who is known worldwide. He is sentenced with life. He's in prison. He's not even given his basic rights. And the government doesn't care at all. You know, when we go, when we talk to them, they don't care. Why have they come with all these human rights activists and organizations? The Bahraini government has come to this level of violation and abuse of human rights and doesn't care. I, with my simple mind, maybe I'm not a human rights activist. I'm not a po politician. I'm not with any political... Uh, a society in Bahrain. I'm just a mother, a wife, and a grandmother. So I need to understand why these things happen. Why Mr. Bird says that this is okay because they are in jail for other offenses. What offenses? My husband is the most decent. I'm 53 years old. My husband is the most decent person I've ever ever seen. He's so careful not to abuse anyone, not to step on anyone's toes, but it's important for him that human rights is for all. It's very important for him. Now, maybe you people here can give me an answer. And I do not agree with the idea that, okay, you keep him in prison, but give him better jail condition. No, he has to be out. They all have to be out. They are all prisoners of conscience. They have all 27. And I loved it. Because people can go around and say what they want. They can do what they want. You bring us here. We study here. We get convinced with your society, with your thinking, with your human rights. When we go to Bahrain and we say, okay, we want what they have. Someone like him who stands very close with the king, becomes a very, very hard wall preventing me to have what he has. What gives him the right to do that? I need an answer to that, and thank you very much. Thank you.